Hello Threshold, great to be with you this morning, though it would be so much better to be with you in person, but by video is good enough. And uh, I hope this finds you really well and hope to see you all very soon. When I was uh, six years old, I used to have what only can be best put as exploding eardrums. Uh, every now and again they would explode, I'd be in pain and then they'd get a bit better and then the other one would go and so on and so on. And one time it was really bad and both eardrums went at the same time and I was in a lot of pain, was rushed into hospital uh, to which having had my ears examined the doctor declared to my mum and dad that unfortunately their son was going to be deaf for the rest of his life. The doctor went on, my mum and dad prayed with me and uh, went to sleep that night in the hospital uh, in the morning the doctors came back to have a look at my ears to which they were amazed to see that they had been completely healed to which apparently I think this is parents license um, I said to the doctors I have been healed because Jesus is a healer but if I'm really honest uh, those sorts of healing miracles have not really been a part of my life um, they are one-off extraordinary stories I hear every now and again um, nowadays it's more stories that I might hear that are going on in Africa and India and often the stories that I hear probably wouldn't stand up in court as evidence to an all-loving God so what's going on with that and I just want to explore a little bit of that with you this morning let's read Acts 5 together verses 12 to 16 the apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people and all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. No one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. But nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits, and all of them were healed. Um, I used to surf. Um, you'd be right to laugh, um, and you're right, I don't do that anymore. If I did, I would be harpooned and thrown into deeper water by Greenpeace, but I did used to surf. And one of those uh, favourite places was a place called Trebarwif Strand, just outside Tintagel. And one day I was got on the board, was stood riding a wave and did what I was best at and fell in, only to get back to the surface to have another wave land on my head. Sucked back under. Get back up to the top and another wave lands on your head. And it was only until my friends got me to shore on my surfboard that I was finally able to breathe and get rid of panic. But that feeling of wave, 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 constantly battering is a really good illustration for life at the moment. Many, many, many people are feeling like they live in a place where wave, wave, wave. And we sometimes say to ourselves, don't we, if when the kids are older or um, when I'm retired or when the mortgage is paid off or we'll be able to have peace. But in the meantime, wave 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 but of course our life doesn't happen in the imaginary place in the future it happens in the meantime yet wave 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 and what amazes me as i sit reflecting with that is that i can barely cope and i've got god with me i'm aware of the father son and holy spirit and somehow i can sometimes find joy in the waves and peace in the waves but what about those 96 percent not in church this morning what about all of those that have yet to experience that real relationship how do they cope with the waves and the waves and the waves without father son and spirit journeying with them and as i think about all those people that are broken and all those people that are struggling i ask ourselves the question like that little community in Acts, can we be the people that bring healing? Can we begin to see more and more stories how people are found to be made well? So let's explore that 
and let's do that by looking at this group in Acts. So I want you to picture for me, first of all, Wembley Stadium, the home of football. The stadium which is graced for most important matches and the best players. It's the place where people will spend a fortune to go and watch a game. But what about if just in a road leading up to Wembley Stadium, a little game of football broke out amongst the kids in the streets and suddenly everybody came out the houses to join in and there's so much joy and it's a new game of football and there's new rules with a new freedom enjoyed by all and it's utterly free to watch and suddenly people gather and they love it and they enjoy it though some are a little bit too scared to join in or perhaps you could think about the Royal Albert Hall the centre of classical music, the place where the most gifted musicians and symphony writers and conductors perform regularly, the place you go for classical music. But in a road leading up to the Royal Albert Hall is a street where one or two have just got their instruments out and have just started to play free music inspired by a new spirit. And different people are coming and joining in, people from all backgrounds. And there's no sheet music. People are just playing this beautiful melody that had never been heard before. It's a new rules and it's full of freedom and it's free for everyone. And people are gathering there and people are loving it. Though some are a little bit scared to join in. Well, something like that is happening in this bit of Acts. Because the centre of how to live, the centre of teaching, the place where the best of the best of the best end up bringing all their wisdom and healing and hope is the synagogue. Right at the centre. But here in a little road leading into that temple is a group of believers who are living a new way. And they're from different backgrounds. They are uneducated fishermen. They are tax collectors and drunkards and women of the night. All sorts of people. And they've gathered there and they're teaching a new way. The Jesus way. Of new rules and real freedom. And it's free for everyone. And they're doing the things that Jesus did. They're healing and they're bringing hope and they're sharing good news and they're releasing captives and people are gathering there and not at the synagogue and they're loving it and they're wondrously looking at it but it's a bit too scary to fully join in. And today we have many a crumbling building called the Christendom Church filled on a Sunday morning with 2 to 3 to 4% of the population more worried about what we, how we do things rather than who we are. More worried about who can be welcome and included rather than showing the grace of our Lord Jesus. And in the little streets, are there not little boats and harbours brewing up? Places with a new rewilded church where God is God and all are radically welcomed and all are finding a new way not around service or gathering but around life in all its fullness where are we called to meet where are we called to gather where are the streets where are the workplaces where must we be living this new life playing this new game playing this new symphony where we can be the way. So, as we think about that little band of believers leading in the Solomon's colonnade, leading up to the temple, why are they attempting this? How are they able to do it when we're not seeing quite the same fruit? And can we be agents of healing, you and I, today in the same way? And to help us with that, I want to look at the first century and what it meant to be a disciple. Because a young Jewish disciple, and at this point we're dealing with Jewish Christians, um, up until the age of nine would have studied the books of Genesis through to Deuteronomy, the books of Moses. And uh, they would have had those five wonderful books memorised by the age of nine. They would know it off by heart. They would know what it means 
How's your Bible verses going today? Genesis through to Deuteronomy. Memorised. Now most people, after they had memorised that up to the age of nine, would then go off to um, do the family business. Learn to fish. Learn to garden. Learn to make cloth. Learn to sew. I don't know. But they would have gone off to do the family business. But the very, very best. The ones who had really got the books of Moses would go on to learn the entire Hebrew Old Testament. Genesis through Malachi. Understood. Memorised. Incredible. And then again, after they had done that, now about 12, 13, maybe 14 years old, they would go and join the family business. But there might be just one or two who are the best of the best of the best. And those guys, and I'm afraid it was guys, would go and see rabbis and find if they can find a job following them. And they'll go for these interviews with these rabbis. And the rabbis would say, what's your opinion on that? And how does that make it work today? And that ruling there, how does that sit now today? And they would bang him with questions. And every now and again, the rabbi would be like, this boy is the best of the best of the best. This boy could even do what I can do. And if that was the case, he would say, follow me. And that best of the best of the best, having heard the words, follow me, the dream of every Jewish boy, they drop everything they have, family life, work life, everything, to doing that which the rabbi does. A two-way relationship where the rabbi sees the best of the best of the best and says, you can do what I can do. And then the rabbi, other disciple gives up everything to do the things the rabbi does. So Jesus comes along. A new type of rabbi. And he goes up to some fishermen. Who are working with their dad. The family business. These aren't the best of the best of the best. These are the B team, the C team and the D team. Uneducated fishermen. And the rabbi comes to them and says. You guys follow me. Jesus is saying, I believe that you can do what I can do. And they immediately drop all of their rods and nets and leave their father running the family business alone as they give up everything to do that which the rabbi does. No wonder throughout scripture we see Peter try to walk on water. No wonder we see them preaching good news in Acts 1. No wonder we see this small band of believers in Solomon's colonnade offering healing because the rabbi believes that they can do what he can do and they have given up everything to do what their rabbi can do. So often you're asked, do you believe in a God? Do you believe in God? But that's the wrong question, I think. The question is, is do you know that God believes in you? And when God called you, he said this, I believe that you can do the things that I can do. I believe you can heal the sick, bring recovery of sight to the blind, freedom to the captives, preach the year of the Jubilee. I believe that everything I can do and witness through my son Jesus, you can do. Do you believe that God believes in you? And have you given up everything to follow him and to do the things that the rabbi can do? So some of you would be like, yeah, I got that. But some of you might be reflecting with me, but why am I not seeing more healing? And for that, I just want to offer a couple of suggestions. Because we could easily just look at this book of Acts and see people being healed in Peter's shadow. And we could ask, could people be healed in our shadow? And I've got a big shadow. I could cast it a long way. And the answer's probably not. So why aren't we seeing so much healing? And I've got two suggestions as to why. 
The first is this. As I hang around in rural Dorset, still listening to the communities, one of the things I do is I share vulnerably with people when I'm struggling. So when people in the community say, Ben, how are you? If I'm struggling, I'll say, well, ah, not so good actually at the moment. And I say, oh, thank you for sharing. Let me tell you how I am. And what I've learned is that vulnerability leads to vulnerability. And when we are vulnerable with our community, they are vulnerable back. And you get to hear all the pain, uh, the dementia, the cancer, the brokenness, the redundancy, so on and so on. And I say to them, I say, what do you do with that? Where do you go with all of that rubbish, with all those waves and waves and waves? And it's then that they say to me, everything I have never heard of, like Ouija boards and yoga and Reiki and um, spiritualists, anything that you can think of, these guys have tried. And I say, that's interesting. What made you try that? And they were saying, oh, my friend does it and recommends it, swears by it. Or so-and-so just said that they went to see one and it was brilliant. And so I went. And I would say, out of interest, I said, I find that prayer really helps. Have you ever tried that? No, never. Have nobody ever said to you about prayer? No, never heard of it. It breaks me to think that all the Christians walking around our communities who are hearing the pain of those who are experiencing wave after wave are unable to say I find prayer really helps can I pray for you because they are trying everything my friends and we have the answer so the only way we're going to see healing the only way we're going to see that is if we're willing to step out of our comfort zones and offer it the second thing I wanted to reflect upon is that sometimes when we talk about healing we get stuck on the massive stories like my ears or the person in Africa who spoke English for the first time when he joined Bible college or the blind person who stood up and could see. And that is wonderful. And we should always pray for those things. And I believe that God still gives us signs of what the kingdom will look like in eternity today. But those are what they are, signs of what we will all experience for eternity. But when I read in Acts, uh, the healing at Gates Beautiful, there's a bit in the sermon there that Peter gives in the synagogue, as this man who was disabled is now dancing and celebrating. And he says that everybody can receive refreshment, peace and forgiveness. Now I've prayed for a lot of people, and not everybody has had those deep, deep, difficulties taken away but what everybody has said when I've prayed for them is oh, I feel peaceful I feel refreshed I feel that I'm not doing this thing alone I believe that God is healing so many people we're just not necessarily noticing it because we're waiting for the miraculous but the miraculous is this life in all its fullness even though there is wave and wave and wave and is laying hands and praying healing on people that allows them to know joy peace in such difficult circumstances let me finish with one story forgive me if you've heard this one before but it's one of my favorites but in the second world war they had a painting competition for the best depiction of peace and there were loads of entries and most were uh the ones that you could guess you know families being reunited uh, beautiful pastoral scenes animals with their young but there was one painting that was completely different to all the others and that painting was of chaos basically cascading waterfalls stormy skies lightning struck uh, torrential rain rivers getting uh, livelier and livelier just wherever you looked there was grey chaos there was wave 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 I and mean, out of the waterfall is one long single branch and at the end of that branch is a beautiful songbird in full throatal melody and that's healing that's peace but even in the storms of life we are this beautiful worshipping peace-giving 
individuals and communities as we worship together. May you this day know that God believes in you. He believes that you can do the things he has done and he is challenging you to give up everything to do the things that he has done. As you do that, may your shadow spread over people and may people say, oh, there's joy with that person. There is fun with that person. May you get opportunities to offer prayer this day tomorrow and the days ahead and as you offer prayer may many people refine refreshments forgiveness and the presence of god almighty father son and holy spirit that means that whatever is thrown at us this side of eternity we can still sing we can still live beautiful lives and we can still know good news may you this week know that God believes in you to do the things that he had done so may you do them this week and every week in Jesus name we pray Amen <laughs>